Hi everybody, in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you how to add a responsive dialogue component to your drop down menu, and here's what I'm talking about. If we go inside card, let's say this is an example for a card, you can see on the top right corner we have this little button for a drop down menu. When we click on it, we have an option to edit and delete. So when we click here, this is our dialogue that shows up, and it's responsive because if we make it smaller, then it turns into a drawer and that is for the card component and if we go back and we check it out how to implement it for a table this is what it looks like now we have it in a table format and then on the here you can see in our row action items we have the drop down menu here if we click on it the same thing shows up when we click here it pops open with the dialogue it's the same thing as the card but just in a different place and yeah today we are going to figure out how to add that in so before I dive into the code and the folder architecture, let's go over what we're trying to build. So for the card example, as you can see, we have this little card and we have this drop down button. When we click on the drop down button, we see the drop down menu show up and we have our edit and delete buttons as you saw in the demo. So we are expected to have this drop down menu within the card. That's the one thing that we need to add. And then the second thing is right. We need to add that responsive dialogue. So we will have a dynamic response responsive dialogue where you pass it in a form and whatever title that you want the dialogue to show and that's what's going to show up so this form you need to generate that as separate from the actual dialogue itself so we can create reusable components and you'll see that in a second so we have those forms or I'm assuming that you have those forms created and we'll take a look at that in a second and then similarly with table it's the same implementation but since we are using a table we have some row action items at the end so this action items area we are gonna have this drop down button as well again but instead of vertical we're gonna have it horizontal and then also we have the same items within here and we're just gonna be reusing the same forms that we created in that card section so when we click on a button we want this dialogue to show up with the respective form associated with the menu item from here Hope that makes sense visually what we are going to be building. And yeah, let's take a look at the code. So here's the project that I'm going to be working with. I already have a couple base components in and I'm assuming that that's where your starting point is. And if not, you could take a look at this repo as an example and use whatever you need to use. Yeah, on a high level, these are the cards without the drop down menu, right? And then the table without the row action items it added. So we're going to add those in. Now, all the data that I have right now is hard coded. So you can see I have this constants file. This is where all my data is being stored and the images the URL links for those and then you have to make sure if you want the images to show up if you are using images that you need to update the remote patterns or add that URL that base URL here as the host name and configure whatever you need to configure just wanted to let you know and then also I have a hook for media query. So I got this from the Shad CNUI GitHub repo. So you can use this if you want. And then also the other core components that we have is our responsive dialogue. So like I mentioned before, we are using that use media hook and we have a dialogue as well as the drawer component from Shad CN. And we could see that this responsive dialogue, like I mentioned, when I was showing you the eraser diagram that this dialogue we are passing in a title and a description and as you can see the description is optional and we are checking if the screen size is a desktop and this is our condition that we're passing and we're using that use media query hook if it is a desktop then we are going to be showing that dialogue and we are going to be passing in manually a as open and set as open coming from our props here and you will see that and then if it is not a desktop then we want it to be mobile and show our drawer and you can see we have our children right here we are passing children and that children is going to be our form and you will see that like i said in a second so this is the responsive dialogue component the next thing i want to share with you are the forms so we already created those forms I'm assuming you have forms whatever forms you're using but this is just a example form we have the edit form and in the edit form right we have the name the role the description based off of the data that we're providing it and which data that we want to edit and a lot of this is just basic skeleton code from Shad CN. you could see the edit form if we want to eventually edit the form we need to figure out a way to get 
the information that we want to edit, the ID or the specific row that we want to edit. So in this case, I have a card ID as that in order to get that specific person data to, you know, update the default values in the form. And then we have the form input fields as well. And you can take a look at this, but I won't spend too much time on it going over it because I'm assuming that you already have it. Let's go and look at our actual card component and take a look at that. We are going to start here and we are going to go within here. So this is this section right here. Let's take a look at it. So you see we have our card page and our card page. We have the, our data that we're passing in to our item component. Like I said, we want to show that menu item in the top right corner of the card. Let's go ahead and import the drop down menu components. This is where our drop down menu is going to go. We want it to go right here, right outside of the link, because when we click on the drop down menu component, we don't want there to be event propagation. So we don't want that popover to go to that link. So we want it to be separate, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. The next thing we want to do is we need to add a div. In that div, we want it to be right here. So already filled it out for me on the absolute right top. So you can see we have a relative here on the card. So if we do something like a span, let's do the import vertical icon and show it right here, something like that. And you can see it's in the top right corner right there. Now it's pretty close up to the corner. We might want more spacing so we could go ahead and do something like that now it's positioned a little bit better so this is how we want it to look aesthetically and we haven't added the drop down menu here so let's go ahead and do that so let's add the drop down menu within the drop down menu we want a trigger and that trigger is going to be that from that more vertical icon like that so it's going to look something like that and then the next thing we want to do is add the drop down menu content so let's go ahead and do that so it's already filling out the items for me um let's see it's saying okay we want a drop down menu item and then that drop down menu item we want a button so we want that item to act as a button so when we click on it we want to have is set edit open uh, you could see it's already filling out this stuff for me let's continue and then let's add it in we also need to close the drop down menu content there we go the first one we want to add is is set edit open you can see we have one for edit and one for delete that's going to be important because there are two different dialogues that we want to pass in different forms to let's go ahead and add those here those are going to be just like that, there we go. Okay, that's one thing. And then we also need to import icon menu, which is another file that we created here, icon menu. It takes in an icon and a text, and that's what we want to show inside our menu item. So we could go ahead and import that. Then the icons themselves we can add. There we go, okay, so we got everything, no red lines. Now we have our drop down menu with our menu items, but now let's go ahead and see what happens when we click on it. You can see when we click on it, it shows up right here. So what I did to achieve that button like look is we took the button from chat CN and then I wrapped the more vertical component around it just like this. And I'm using the ghost variant. So then when we hover over it, it looks like it's a button and the user knows that it's a button. So then when we click on it, we have our menu item. When we click on this, nothing happens. And why does nothing happen? Because there's nowhere in here that's telling us to open the dialogue. The dialogue, that responsive dialogue hasn't been imported or shown at all in this card. So we're going to have to go ahead and import that responsive dialogue that I showed you earlier. And then what we can do is include that responsive dialogue right here. So let's see, responsive dialogue. We want to pass in the is open, um, that is edit open to is open to the responsive dialogue. Then we want to make sure our child component, we want that edit form that I showed you earlier, uh, which we haven't imported, but we need to import. And then it's going to also finish the delete form for me. Okay, so let's go ahead and import our forms. That is something that we needed to do. There we go. So we have imported our forms. The, this is what the responsive dialogue component looks like. So like I said, we are passing 
these props into it that I showed you earlier. And this is the props that I want to have for the delete. And within it, we have that child form component that we're passing in. So then if we try opening it, we click on a specific drop down menu item. Let's say we want to open the one for edit, right? The one for edit, what it's going to do, it's going to trigger this on click. It's going to pass this to our responsive dialog to open up the dialog. And then let's see what happens. There we go. We got our dialog to show up. And then it's already defaultly responsive because we are using that responsive dialog component. And then also another thing you need to keep in mind, um, since we are passing this set is open here, we also need to pass it to the form as well because within the form we have buttons. Like for example, the delete form, we have a cancel button and that cancel button has to also be able to control the state of the dialogue if we want it open or closed. So if we look inside that delete form, you will see that set is open is also not only being passed to the on submit, which is that delete button, but it's also being passed here to that cancel button, which is really important to keep in mind. So that is just one tidbit I wanted to share with you. And then now if we click on the cancel button, it closes. And yeah, that's it for the card component. Let's get into the table component. So for table, it's not that much different than implementing it for the card. This is our table route. You could see it goes to there. And I have everything related to the data table in this components folder right here. So we got columns, data column header, and the data table itself. Now, if we go inside data table, this is where our data is showing up. Let's open this up a little bit. So we got sorting happening. We got column filters, and this is all from ShadCN. So I basically copied and pasted it and edited whatever I needed to edit. And yeah, we got everything here in terms of our table, but we need to add a row action items column right here. So let's go ahead and create a file called data table row actions. So this is where our drop down menu item is essentially going to be. So then now I'm going to paste in what we're going to have for the row action items. And it's going to look very similar to the card drop down component right here. Very, very similar. So let's go ahead and add it in and let's look at it. So we got a use client. We got all our imports. You see, we got our drop down import as well. And then we have our data table row action items. And this is from ShadCN. And the only thing we are passing or adding to it is we have our edit open and delete open variables again and they are added here and then we have our card id from the row from the data that we have passed in here and then we see that we have our responsive dialogue components showing up in here so this is where we would want to keep it within the row action items area and then we got our drop down menu here it's the same one from the card section now since we got our data row actions here so now that we have our row actions uh, drop down menu item created inside here then we're going to go inside the columns file which is where we are setting up all these columns we want to add an extra column here for actions so let's go ahead and add that right here at the end so we have the id actions we have the cell and we're passing in the data table row actions that we needed to import into this file right here from this file that we just created and then we are passing in the row so we could get information about the row if we want to change like a specific item in the database or in the data so that's how you would do that so then now since we have that there that's the last thing that we needed to add essentially so if we click on this you see that the drop down menu is opening we click on edit and then we got our dialog to show up and that's it for this video. The code will be in the description below, like I mentioned. Feel free to leave any questions in the comment section below if you have any. And thanks for watching.